Hello and welcome back to Supposedly Fun. My name is Greg. We are heading into June and every June I like to read LGBTQ books. So I have a reading list of sorts. You can call it TBR. I don't really like to call things TBR except in headlines for videos and things like that because to me a TBR is like a definite set of things that are to be read and that implies that you have to read them. I am choosing to think of these as a pile of hopefuls which is language that I got from That Bookish Bear on Instagram, and I find it much more helpful because these are the books that I am hoping to get to in the month of June. I can guarantee I won't get to all of them, but I'm going to see how many I get to, and I'm giving myself a pile of possibilities because I want to mood read my way through them and try to decide which ones I want to get to next and what I'm feeling like, and in order to have options, I need a bigger list. So that's what I'm doing. There's kind of a hodgepodge of titles in here. Last year I had a really specific theme that I went with for my LGBTQ reading in June, which was that I wanted to focus on Black queer stories and Black queer authors. And this year I had thought about focusing on Asian American writing, and I decided not to do that. I'm just going to be intentional about reading Asian American authors throughout the year, and I'm going to open things up in LGBTQ reading for Pride Month. I usually have my Pride mustache. I did shave my Pride mustache about a week ago. I just didn't do upkeep, so it looks more like I have five o'clock shadow everywhere. The Pride mustache will be back, and we'll see how long I keep it. Lately, I've been keeping it until early fall, so it's just my summer look, and I just got to do a better job keeping up with it. So stay tuned for that. So I've divided this into three different categories because I like to make things complicated, but also because I like to make things easy. Part of that is because I created a long list and then that would be unmanageable. So I separated out things that I really want to focus on in print, some books that are available on audio and I can think about, and then my bonus list, things I can get to if I have time or if I'm really feeling like I'm in the mood for one of them, I can grab one of them as well. So let's start with the print books that I would like to get to. The first one is something that I ordered and purchased recently specifically because of that focus on Asian American authors for the rest of the year, and it's Edinburgh by Alexander Chi. This is something I've been wanting to read for a while. What finally got it through was that Douglas Stewart, the author of Shuggy Bane, recommended it on a list of LGBTQ books, and there's another book in this pile that ticks the same box. But also it popped up in the video I did where I ran through the best Asian American authors and whether or not I have read them. I will link that video down below. And I've never read Alexander Chi, but I've heard so many good things about him as a writer. He also wrote The Queen of the Night, and this is the one that I decided to go with. It doesn't sound like a happy book. It follows a character named Fee, who as a child is part of a boys choir at his church, and there is sexual abuse happening, and he does not say anything about it, and his best friend commits suicide, and as he grows up, he blames himself for not having done enough, as he perceives it. So it's not a happy book, but it is something I'm really looking forward to getting to. This is one of the ones I'm really hoping to put an emphasis on in June as I read LGBTQ books. And the next one is The Women of Brewster Place by Gloria Naylor. Now, I think this is the third year that I'm putting this on my LGBTQ TBR, and I didn't manage to get to it last year when I focused on Black queer authors and Black queer stories. And from what I'm hearing now is that the LGBTQ element of this is really just a kind of tiny part of it and maybe only comes in at the end. So I still want to get to it, but I think I'm going to put emphasis on some of the other print books that I have and try to get to this by the end of the year. I, because that angle is turning out to be a small part of it, I don't feel as much of an urgency to get to it in Pride Month, if that makes sense. But I still want to read it. I've heard a lot of really good things about it. It's a great possibility and a great book to have around so I can get to it when I get to it. And then there's Last Call, A True Story of Love, Lust, and Murder in Queer New York. This is a true crime book. I'm not really into true crime too much anymore. Basically, I feel like it can be a little bit lurid. It can be a little exploitative. So for me to engage with it, there has to be something else going on. And in this one, the idea is that it talks about the victims of the Last Call killer and how he picked them up and their lives. And it talks about the queer scene at the time in New York where the AIDS epidemic was 
ravaging the community and had been for several years at that point, and the ways in which being marginalized made them a good target for a serial killer and things like that. And that got my interest. I have heard kind of mixed things about this so far. One of the critiques which I had been unaware about is that Elon Green is not actually a member of the LGBTQ community, and that may have given him a bit of a remove from the story, but I haven't read it myself and I would like to. So this is another one I'm hoping to get to this month. The next one is A Boy's Own Story by Edmund White. This is a classic gay novel that I purchased this year, and I've never read Edmund White, and I've always been meaning to. So maybe this will finally be the year. I've had one other book of his for a while and not gotten around to it, but this is the first in a trilogy of books that are semi-autobiographical following a boy growing up and coming of age and coming to terms with his sexuality. And I'm really looking forward to reading it. I have too many options that I desperately want to get to. <laughs> I won't get to all of them, but just know in my heart, I really do want to read all of these books and I'm excited about all of them, which is part of the problem. Then there's a book I just hauled. This is How You Lose the Time War by Amal al Matar and Max Gladstone. When I did my book haul, I didn't really talk about the LGBTQ angle because I wasn't sure if that was something of a spoiler. And then people commented on my haul video to mention that it would be a good book to read for Pride. And then I realized it mentions the LGBTQ angle right on the book in a blurb. It is a twisting, sapphic time travel fantasy love story that never stops surprising. So I don't know why, I felt like I had to be secretive about that. But here we are, and it's on my list of hopefuls for Pride Month this year. This was recommended to me by one of the owners of the Montana Book Company, and it's a little bit outside my comfort zone, which is part of the appeal of it. It's a small book. It is... It's less than 200 pages, so this should be very doable, maybe if I have a long weekend somewhere, which never ever ever happens, but if something like that were to happen, I feel like this would be an easy book to just curl up with and while away an afternoon and hopefully finish quickly. So that's another possibility. Then I have This Brutal House by Niven Govindan. This was brought to my attention by Jen the Librarian, and unfortunately, she DNF'd it because she wasn't really loving it, but I didn't know that when I ordered it, and I still have it. I'm still really interested in it. It is set in the ball scene, and it's about house mothers. So if there are drag houses, there's usually a house mother who forms a sort of protective figure over the people in the house, and five of these mothers come to protest outside City Hall because their children are disappearing. And it sounds like a really interesting book. If you are familiar with the series Pose, it's sort of set in that same world, but a little bit less happy. I haven't seen Pose, but it doesn't sound like a happy show either. So it's just not a happy time, maybe. But I'm still looking to get to this at some point. Then there's a book that Bernardine Evaristo had recommended last year, Forced Out, A Detective Story of Prejudice and Resilience by Kevin Maxwell. He talks about being a gay police officer in the UK and how he tried to make a difference. And also he was a police officer of color and how ultimately he was, as the title implies, forced out of his job. And it sounds really interesting and very timely and I would love to get to it. And I think this is the perfect time to do it if I have the time and the bandwidth. So we'll see how that goes. Then there is Camp by L.C. Rosen. This is another book that was brought to my attention by Jen the Librarian. I will link her profile down below. If you're unfamiliar with her channel, please check it out. She is a delight. And I am really looking forward to this book. Unlike some of the other books, it's a little less serious, a little more fun. It is a YA novel, and it is about someone who goes to a summer camp every year, and he is infatuated with this boy who never pays attention to him because he is too effeminate. So he tries to butch himself up in order to catch the boy's attention. And it's about accepting yourself and who you are no matter what. And I think that's a great message. And it's something that I used to struggle with because when I grew up, being effeminate was something that was seen as shameful. And obviously I understand better now. So there's a bit of a personal connection to this book as well. And then we have Cantoras by Carolina de Robertis. This is another one I'm really, really, really hoping to get to. And another one that doesn't sound all that happy, but I've heard really great things about her writing. She pops up on a lot of lists for LGBTQ books, and I'm very excited to try to get to this. I've heard so many good things about Cantoras. It is about 
five women in Uruguay in the 1970s who meet on a beach and it follows them over the years. It is supposed to be a beautiful book and I'm really looking forward to it. And then the final book on my print book list is The Story of the Night by Colm Toybin. This is another book that I had just hauled and it is another one that was recommended by Douglas Stewart, the author of Shuggy Bane. And I've heard so many good things about Colm Toybin, similar to Alexander Chi, and I just really need to get to one of his books and it sounds fascinating. If you want to check out the book haul where I talk about this a little more, I will link it in the description box down below. So in terms of priorities, I definitely think I want to get to Edinburgh, Cantoras, This Is How You Lose the Time War, and I think I'm going to keep it at three. If I only finish three print books in June, I'm going to say I hope it's those three, but we'll see how that goes. And then in terms of things that are available on audio, one of the first ones I'm probably going to get to is This Town Sleeps by Dennis E. Staples. It is about a gay Ojibwe man who is in a relationship with a former classmate of his who is not very open with his sexuality. And I believe it deals a little bit with Ojibwe mythology, so there's a Native American angle to this book, which I think would be really great to get in. So this is probably going to be the first audiobook that I tried to get in in the month of June. And then I had gone through my list of possibilities to find what is available on Scribd, and because Scribd has been kind of annoying where it will make books not available and I'll have to wait for them, I don't know how many of these I'm going to get to. I definitely will do This Town Sleeps first, and then I'm just gonna have to see what's available and if anything disappears and course correct as needed because I really want everything I read in the month of June to be LGBTQ. So among the options, both of Garth Greenwell's books, What Belongs to You and Cleanness, are on script right now. Will they still be there? I don't know. I've never read either of his books and I really want to get around to that and I think audio could be a good push to get me there. I also really want to do A Single Man by Christopher Isherwood. I have this tiny pocket edition of the book and it's on audio. It would be a quick listen if it's still available, depending on what happens with availability on Scribd. And there's Mississippi Sissy by Kevin Sessoms, which is also on Scribd. So we'll see if it's still available when or if I get around to it. Other options that I don't have physical copies of are She of the Mountains by Vivek Shreya, Where We Go From Here by Lucas Roca, The Fall by May Archer, and Felix Ever After by Kaysen Callender. And The Fall is a gay romance novel with, I believe, a bit of a mystery angle to it because gay people need romance too you know we like to have little guilty pleasures even though i don't like the term guilty pleasures don't judge me i don't care if you do then we have the rest of my pile we'll see how many of these i actually get to if i get to any of them because like i said i think i'm going to focus on the other ones that i talked about a little bit more but if I need other options, or if I'm just not in the mood, or am in the mood for one of these, I'll pick them up. There's The Memoirs of a Beautiful Boy by Robert Lulu. I've had this book forever and not gotten around to it. So someday I need to just do it. Just do it. Same goes for The Indian Clerk by David Leavitt. I feel like this is on my June TBR every year as well. I mentioned that I have another Edmund White book. It's City Boy, My Life in New York City during the 1960s and 1970s which is a fascinating time period for gay history. And I've always wanted to read it, but I read Dancer from the Dance two years ago and decided that since that ticks some of the same boxes, I put this off. And then last year I ended up focusing on black queer stories. So this one got put down to the side. Someday I will get to it. And now I have a copy of A Boy's Own Story. And I feel like that's the Edmund White book I would like to get to first, but this one is still in the mix. The same thing happened to City of the Night. Once I read Dancer from the Dance two years ago, I wasn't going to read another book set in the same time period, and then this got bumped off of the list last year as well. It's a chunky, chunky book. There is an audio of it on Scribd, but I didn't put it with the audio listings because since it's a chunky book, you can imagine the audio is really long as well. Yeah, it's about 500 pages. So if I get to it, that's great. But I feel like with its size, this is something I'm likely not to get to. And that's fine if I don't. I just want to do it someday. And then there's Amateur, A Reckoning with Gender, Identity, and Masculinity by Thomas Page McBee. I really want to read this book, but I have so much on my plate <laughs> with my pile of hopefuls as it is that I'm just not sure it's going to be too likely. 
So we'll see what happens. It's not a very long book. It's less than 200 pages, so there's potential that I could squeeze it in. But I'm going to focus on some other things first, if that makes sense. There's also Confessions of a Mask by Yukio Mishima. This is a book I've had on my shelves for about 10 years and not gotten around to. And again, I really need to do that someday. This has been perennially on my LGBTQ reading list for June, and I just haven't gotten to it. But someday, I don't know if this is going to be the year, maybe I'll do it outside of Pride Month. Blackbird by Larry Duplachan is another one, and this is from a series of books I was really excited about. It's Little Sisters Classics. They are published by Arsenal Pulp Press. Basically, they looked for LGBTQ classic books that were in danger of either being forgotten or just being out of print forever and put them back in print. And I have a couple of them because this one is a black queer story. It's the one I'm singling out the most, but there is another one that is very short, like novella length. So I don't think I'm going to try to squeeze it in during Pride Month. Let me go grab it. Just show it to you. It's called Franny, the Queen of Provincetown, and it's only small. So, you know, I'm just going to throw it on my pile of possibilities. And they both come from this series by Arsenal Pulp Press that I think is really fantastic and love to support. I would recommend you look up the rest of the series. I'll try to link it down below if I remember, because it's just a fantastic project that they have done. And then there's The Lauras by Sarah Taylor. This book is particularly of interest to me because one of the characters is non-binary, and that is a perspective you don't tend to see very often. So I would like to get to it, but again, with the sea of possibilities that I have, I'm not sure it'll happen this month. It's in the mix. We'll see if I get to it or not. I want to get to it, but there's just a lot of possibilities. I'm not going to say the name of the next book because it is a gay slur. And if you follow along, you know that I once had a video where I did not say any curse words at all, get flagged for language. And I did get that flag taken away on appeal, but I've always been really paranoid. So there's a Larry Kramer novel, the title of which is a gay slur. I really wanted to get to it last year because he died last year and I wanted to honor him and his legacy. But then I ended up focusing on black queer stories and this isn't one of them. So I feel bad putting it in the pile of possibilities, not the main pile, but the other pile. And because of that, I might pull this one out, but I'm trying to think about what I can manageably do. And it's not a small book either. So it's a, it's a possibility, but I'm going to put it on the maybe pile. Two more. We have Becoming a Man by Paul Monet. I've heard so many really great things about Paul Monet, and I haven't read anything by him. This is the only one that I have an actual copy of. This is, I believe, a memoir. It's supposed to be really, really good, and I want to get to it. There's just too much that I want to get to. Reader problems, right? And the final book on my pile of possibilities for Pride Month 2021 is Ruby Fruit Jungle by Rita Mae Brown. A lesbian classic. I have never read it, and I really want to at some point. Will it be this year? I don't know. But at least I have a copy of it, so it's here <laughs> waiting for me when I ever get to it, whenever that will be. So, these are the books that I am hoping to get to in the month of June. It's my pile of possibilities. Some of these I will get to, many of them I won't, being honest. I would love to hear if you have thoughts, if there are any that you think I should prioritize, maybe some that you think I could back burner and save myself a little bit of trouble. I'd love to hear what you have planned for your Pride reading for the month of June, if you do such a thing. And if you are, I would love to hear what you will be reading. Please put it in the comment section down below. You know what to do. Happy Pride, everybody. The Pride Stash is going to be coming back. Stay tuned. It's kind of here, but not quite. It'll be back in its regular glorious form whenever I have the time to shave. Who knows when that will be. As always, I really appreciate your time, and I will be back. Until next time, happy reading.